Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today, we're gonna make climbing holds. I went to the craft store and got the cheapest block of air dry clay that I could possibly get. I don't think you have to have anything special here at all. I took a chunk of it and started making the main structure of the hold that I wanted, just the general shape. After I had the general shape, then I started smoothing out the bottom so that it was flush with the surface that it was sitting on, just so there wasn't a little overhang at the bottom. Then I started adding some of the ridges and details that I wanted, all along trying to keep the bottom flush with the material that it was sitting on. With the main structure in place, I started to smooth out some of the sharp points, tried to remove some of the fingerprints, and then just adjusted the size and the shape as I went along. Mainly I just tried to remove any evidence of like a big fingerprint, where it looked like I was actually sculpting it with my hands. And once I got a pretty good general shape, I found the center point where I wanted the bolt to go through and ran a quarter inch dowel through all the way to the bottom. I used a big flat washer to make a flat section on the top of this hole so the bolt had a place to sit. I took some broken pieces of concrete and rock and gently pressed them into the surface all over the hold. This is really just experimentation, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It just depends on how much texture you want to add and how much you want it to be smooth. There are holds that are perfectly smooth, there are ones that feel like a real rock, so it's really just kind of where you want to land. So I just textured it until I was happy with it, and all along this process, I was testing the hold to see how it felt, holding it in different positions. I used some sign material, like corrugated plastic, to make a simple box around the hold. I used some hot glue to put the whole box together. Now, I wasn't very careful with the actual shape here and the overall volume. I probably should have done it a little bit closer to the hold because I almost ran out of silicone. Either way, you just have to make sure that you seal up all the gaps on the inside of the form. I pressed the hold into place and then mixed up some silicone. This is Moldstar 20, one to one ratio, super easy to mix. Just put it all in a container and then I degassed it with my vacuum chamber. This is a new purchase for me. Then I poured it over my hold, making sure not to leave any air bubbles on that hole on the inside of it. You can see that I almost ran out. I had just enough and I really should have had a little bit more. This stuff sets up pretty quickly. So after it's set up, I used a utility knife to cut away the form. There are tons of different types of silicone. This one I didn't pick for any particular reason. Mainly it was the right size and it was a one-to-one -one mix. There's a lot of different ones that are used for different things. I pulled the clay out of the mold and really didn't have to do much except clean out the dry clay that was left at the bottom. I sprayed in some mold release and then mixed up some epoxy. This epoxy is probably not the best one to use for this, but it's what I had on hand. So I mixed it up, pulled out the air in the vacuum chamber again, and then poured it into the mold. I didn't have time to fully degas it before it started setting up, so I poured it anyway and used a heat gun to get rid of the rest of the bubbles. It dried to this crazy amber color. You could dye it if you wanted to when you mixed it up, but I like this color. I used a belt sander to flatten out the bottom and then used a die grinder to clean off any sharp edges. And this was just a matter of feeling around on the hold to find anything sharp that poked you in your hand and then smooth it out. Then I just bolted it into the climbing wall. The climbing wall is probably a whole nother project video by itself. We'll do that another time. Obviously, if you only want to make one or two holds, this is not a very cost-effective solution. You have to pay for the epoxy, you have to pay for the silicone, it'll add up. But, if you wanted to make a whole bunch of the same thing, this would actually be a pretty reasonable way to do it. When you are climbing, you want to have variation between the holds so you don't have a bunch of the same thing. But, if you design your hold in a way that can be turned to get a different type of grip, you can have one design that effectively is a bunch of different holds. You don't even have to make a hole for a bolt on these holds. You could actually just use screws. These are some holds that I made that are really long and so it didn't make sense to put a bunch of bolts in them. So I just made holes to use decking screws. And sometimes you can actually use a bolt and a screw to keep a hold from spinning. Imagine this is a hold and there's a bolt hole right here. Well, if you're going to climb on this side and you're putting all your weight on here, it's going to spin on that bolt. So a lot of times you'll do a big hole for the bolt, but then also do a small hole to add a screw that's gonna stop this whole thing from turning. One more thing to consider is that there are different types of bolts that are used for climbing holes. In fact, these two are very different. They have a different shape, a different size head, and use a different size Allen key. The back of the head of this one is flat, so it's gonna work with the hold that we made in this video, but this kind actually has a bevel to it. So if you're using this type of beveled bolt, you have to make sure that you work that into your design. Before I go, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Kalo, and you're gonna hear me talk about them a lot over the next couple of months because honestly, I'm in love with this product. What is Kalo? 
It's a wedding band, but not just any wedding band. It's a silicone wedding band. And there's a lot of reasons why you should wear a silicone band instead of a metal band. We're gonna talk about one of those today, and that's safety. The fact of the matter is, this stuff is really resilient and really strong and stretchy, but it's weaker than your finger. So if you get this caught on a tool or on a climbing hold, this thing is gonna rip off before it rips off your finger. Now that may seem like a long stretch, but I actually know two people who have seen people get their fingers destroyed because of the wedding ring. In fact, that happened to Jimmy Fallon. You've probably heard of him before. Anyway, these are great to wear. They're super comfortable. I enjoy wearing this more than I do my metal band. In fact, you can look back to the last couple of months of videos and see that I've been wearing it for a long time. These are made for people who work with their hands. They're very resilient and resistant to a lot of stuff that you're gonna deal with and I'm gonna deal with in the shop. And they also come in a bunch of different colors, so you don't have to have blue. So be sure to go check them out, Kalo.com. All right, quickly I gotta go because these bugs are destroying me. Thanks for watching this video. I'd love to know what you think about it. Let me know in the comments below or at my website, I like to make stuff.com. I've got all my social links down there, including a Twitch icon, and that goes directly to my Twitch channel where I live stream once a week from my shop. I've got a lot of other project videos that you might be interested in. Don't forget to subscribe so you get all the new project videos that are coming out. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.